Hello, uh, everyone, again. Uh, welcome to APC webinar series and the first session of uh, parasailing. Uh, my name is Sean Lee, APC Sports Manager. It's my pleasure to meet you today. Uh, for today's session, uh, Mr. Massimo is with us. Uh, he is the um, Para World Sailing Manager at World Sailing, also former parasailer. Is going to provide a full uh, overview of the discipline uh, covering aspect from selling for the first time to equipment and adaptation to suit different requirements. I'm sure this will help your coaching, training, and also management work. Um, I have a housekeeping that require you, um, your cooperation. Uh, please make sure your microphone is on mute during the session. Uh, the Q&A session will be given at the end of the session. However, you are welcome to leave your question in the chat window anytime. Also, all participants are request, requested to send the full name in English together with the email address in the chat window to verify your identity and generate the participation certificate. Without further ado, I hand the microphone over to Massimo, please. Yes, uh, good afternoon and good evening, uh, everybody. I am uh, Massimo Lige, and uh, I'm the Power Washing Manager of uh, World Saving. I will show you a presentation about uh, our sport, Power Saving, and the presentation will be mainly in two parts. The first part uh, will be an overview of uh, parasailing, what is parasailing, uh, who can compete in our events, uh, different disabilities we cover. And the second part will be about uh, our main uh, development program we use for new and emerging uh, nations. It is called uh, the Parasailing Development Program. So I start now with my presentation. Now, uh, this is uh, the all sailing in the world is uh, managed by World Sailing. World Sailing is the International Federation of Sailing and uh, is responsible for sailing for the people with disability worldwide. Uh, our responsibility includes the parasailing programs, uh, the selection of uh, events, equipment selection, and uh, lots more. We promote uh, assess and support program with, for disabled sailing run by member national authorities. So they are basically a national uh, Paralympic Committee or National Sailing Federation and the Regional Sailing Federation. Uh, for example, in Asia, we have the Asian Sailing Federation. We promote uh, all type of sailing for all people with all type of degree of disabilities. It, uh, as if you see later, we will cover different types of disabilities, from physical disabilities to intellectual disabilities to uh, any other type of disabilities. Our main office is basically based in London, UK. One of the uh, main uh, characteristics of our sport is that sailing is one of very few sports in which athletes uh, with and without disability can participate in equal terms. We can have, a, uh, let's say, event dedicated to uh, sailors with disabilities, but we have a lot of events uh, that are open. So with the right equipment, uh, there is the possibility for people with, uh, for sailors with disability to race uh, against and together people without disability. So this is one of the very, uh, important part of our sports. Uh, regarding our sports, uh, we start, we have been in uh, Paralympic Games uh, since uh, 1996, and uh, our last uh, uh, participation at the Paralympic Games was uh, 2016. The core value of our sports uh, are the core value of uh, the IPC and the APC. So it's uh, equity, opportunity to excel, and the empowerment for sailors and uh, athletes with uh, disabilities. What is uh, sailing? Sailing uh, 
you can say it in many forms. You can cruise, you can race, you can simply potter around in all your kind of boats uh, on the sea, on a lake, uh, on a river. You can do alone. We have boats uh, that you can do it alone. You can do it in company. And uh, you don't have to be able to swim because the main part is staying on the boat. So it's, it's open. There is a lot of things to do, uh, a lot of uh, different uh, type of sailing. You can be a new sailor. You can start sailing. You can return to sailing. And uh, we have a different, uh, let's say, examples of people. We have some people like you see, and uh, a new disabled woman that uh, with no experience in sport, that she decided to start sailing as a sport, as fun to start. And other sailors that uh, uh, after become, they were the sailors before, they became disabled and then they started sailing. And uh, with a little help and finding the right boat, they can do everything and they can go back to sail at uh, full, uh, full capacity. So when you are on a boat, uh, a lot of uh, our sailors tell that uh, they feel uh, much less disabled and more self-sufficient. Because on a boat, uh, you, are, you are your own man, you are in charge and you are in control. So there is no disability when you are sitting in your boat. And now we have a, a video that uh, explains uh, with the words of some of our sailors uh, what is uh, parasailing. Sailing is uh, refreshing. It's to get away from uh, the, the, the troubles and the life itself. Work, uh, house, family, whatever. When we are stressed out, get to the water and catch a wind. It's very relaxing. Ya, navegar para mí, a vela, eh, con una metáfora de la vida, ya que al final es puede cambiar el viento, puede cambiar la intensidad, puede cambiar el, la dirección, eh, y al final depende de uno ajustar las velas. Y, y con eso uno puede llegar a donde uno quiera, entonces al final es ser protagonista de lo que te, de lo que te toca vivir y no víctima de lo que te toca vivir. Así que eso. Well, it's a grand adventure. So you never know what the wind is up to, and I wish other people could could get to experience it. Well, I've been growing up with sailing since the age, I would say, around five or six years old. It has been close to nature and bringing things that make our life. So nature, people, and also technical things, bringing them together in a good equilibrium. That's what's all about sailing for me. Have you seen, uh, we have different uh, type of boats, uh, different type of disabilities and uh, all sailing uh, together. Now, uh, as, as I told before, uh, sailing is uh, uh, covering a different types of disability. We can have, uh, we can, uh, we have sailors that uh, have disability that may limit uh, physical mobility, so physical disabilities. We have sailors with uh, de developmental disabilities. We have sailors with visual impairments. We have uh, blind sailing events. We have people with hearing impairments. We have a uh, uh, world championship uh, in cooperation with uh, Deep Olympics and uh, world sailing uh, events uh, and world championship with people with hearing impairments. And uh, we have sailors with uh, cognitive disabilities. So as you can see, we can cover all the type of disabilities. We have a different approach for each type of disabilities, but uh, Everyone can sail. The boats. There are several classes of boats that are popular and are mainly used by our adaptive sailing program. Usually they are the Hansa dinghy and mainly the Hansa 3 or 3. Then we have a, a SB14, as you see is uh, the boat on the top left. 
And there is a new bot that uh, just started now to be used. Uh, and this bot that came from uh, Asia, is a manufacturing in China. We have a uh, RS Venture, that is a two-person bot, and we have the 2.4 Norlin OD. 2.4 Norlin OD is probably the most used bot uh, around the world. The bot that you can see here are bots that are specifically uh, used for uh, para events. But uh, if uh, your country or if your club don't have, uh, doesn't have a specific para bot, you can sail anyway with minor adaptation and uh, with a certain degree of stability. You can use any bot to sail. In, in fact, uh, just any bot with a stable platform has the potential to be used for instruction in accessible sailing programs. If you imagine uh, like uh, a lot of bots that you see on TV probably or on your, on your countries, they are big uh, cruise boats that are perfect to start a sailing, uh, basic sailing programs because they are stable. You can accommodate different types of disability from wheelchair to cognitive disability and visual impairment. So there is no need to have a specific uh, para equipment to start the sailing. And uh, furthermore, we have a different equipment adaptation. Uh, as I told, some boats, uh, they can be used for parasailing, but maybe they need a minor adaptation. They need probably a seat uh, if you are in a wheelchair, a bucket seat uh, if you have a high disability, and uh, some uh, sound signal if you are blind, uh, uh, space uh, for a car if you have a cognitive disabilities, uh, and uh, let's say that adaptation are really uh, cheap and minor. And if you work with your sailors and with your athletes, uh, they will really be ready to help you and to tell, uh, that, to tell you what they need. So adaptation is, is a very important part, but it's, uh, it's easy to do and it really improve because with the simple adaptation, you can raise your level from, let's say, a local sailors to a national sailor, and you can even participate to bigger and more important events. You can see in the, this slide, there are some examples of small and easy adaptation and some more technological adaptation. We have, a, as you see here, a slide seat. So if you are in a wheelchair, you can go from one side to another. A roll bar, if you have a problem of stability, you can grab your roll bar. We have a sliding seat for an athlete that has a high disability, so can, uh, can be seated with uh, all the comfort in uh, this seat and uh, slide from one side to another. We have another seat. We have a, this a sip and puff. This is for athletes with a really high disability. They cannot move uh, their hands uh, and uh, the upper part of the body. So you can control your board only with your tongue and your chin. We have a bucket seat. You have another example of, uh, of a sip and puff. And uh, here you have uh, a simple uh, rudder. So if you have a problem to grab something, you can add uh, uh, some more space uh, to grab uh, your rudder. And, uh, being uh, being easy to say so as you see these adaptation are all uh, made uh, by themselves is not a big uh, there's not a big involvement of uh, of technology uh, otherwise than uh, the sip and puff but the sip and puff is some of the manufacturers they already provide all the technological part if you want to state a program in your countries, in your MA, in your Paralympic, uh, National Paralympic Community, what do you need? You don't need uh, a lot of things. You need basically one of three boats that are the same boat, that are the same type, and that can be easily made accessible if they are not already accessible. You need a safety coach boat. You need a life jacket because uh, no one usually falls in the water, but safety needs to be the primary concerns. So life jacket. You need uh, some waiver or program release to explain what you are doing. And then you need to check your venue that uh, is accessible 
that has needs uh, that uh, fit the needs of the uh, participants. If you have people in a wheelchair, you need ramps. If you, if you have people that are blind, you need some other type of support. So every disability, as you know, has different needs. So check your venue and check that is, uh, everything is, uh, is ready. Uh, basically, this is uh, another part. What I need to do, I need to prepare my equipment, check that everything is okay, maybe including someone that has an experience in the type of disability that I want to include, design a program, and the first step is usually start with the come and try program. You come to, the, to this event and you start saving. It's uh, important that uh, I think as in any other sports. The main uh, outcome for all participants is to have fun. You need to come there and having fun sailing. Then you need to prepare your volunteers. You need to find sailors. You can work with, uh, uh, let's say, rehabilitation center, national community, national Paralympic committee, hospitals, uh, or uh, any other, uh, any other, organization that is involved in uh, with disabilities and then decide what the next steps will be you can decide to have a fun program so you can decide to say uh, one day every week uh, every two week uh, to have fun with no involvement in competition or you can decide to start with the fun program and see if you have sailors uh, that are keen to compete uh, let's say, increase the level of your program. As we told before, we, as in all sport with disability, we need uh, requirements in our facility. We need uh, to overcome the challenge uh, uh, that we have with physical access, uh, and uh, we need uh, to minimize the loss of independence for our sailors. So we need to check our web, our, uh, our site, and it's important to understand that if we have an accessible facilities, the, this accessibility benefits everyone. It's not only the disabled or the people in a wheelchair, it's uh, the people that uh, are growing older, the women with a pushchair and the young children, uh, is everyone that uh, can have if you break a leg and you have uh, canes uh, or you are in a wheelchair. So, the accessibility is a benefit for everyone. So basically you take a look at your center that you, where you want to start saving, and there are some other questions to do. Are the docks, are the pontoons accessible for a person in a wheelchair? Or even, I can even have a slipway if I don't have pontoon and can be used for the event. So if I am in a wheelchair, how can I reach the boat? There is a slipway, there is a pontoon, uh, there is a gravel, uh, there is a sand. Uh, we have a restroom or uh, toilets uh, that are accessible. And uh, can my athletes uh, enter the building? So they can use the toilet, they can go to the, to change your, uh, themselves. Uh, so that's, uh, they are the main, main four points. Uh, about the accessibility of a venue. We need, we need ramps that should have a gentle slope. We need to check if we have step and stairs. We need to check our docks, pontoons. We can have a shore based launching. So if we have a firm, a smooth beach, uh, or we can use the, we, if we don't, uh, if we have a, let's say a sand, uh, uh, short base launching, we can lay some carpet, we can say we can use some plywood, we can use some uh, heavy duty mattress, and uh, the problem is uh, is overcome. So it's, it's easy to solve the accessibility problem. As I told, we have, uh, we have accessible doorways, so our sailors can, uh, our athletes can enter the, the club uh, or the venue. We have a pathway, so we, we usually have a hard surface, uh, not sand gravel. 
and uh, we have uh, changing rooms or uh, let's say accessible restroom. Let's say this part of the changing rooms uh, is more for countries that have like a cold climates and uh, you sail in winter. So you need to get changed. If you sail in, uh, let's say, Southeast Asia or we had our events uh, sometimes in Thailand, uh, yeah, you need a changing room, uh, but it's not, it's not so important because uh, there is no problem with the cold uh, or uh, being uh, wet uh, in a cold weather in the winter. Then this is uh, some of the, these are some of the instructional techniques. As I told uh, in the one of the first slide, parasailing and sailing uh, are the same sport. They have the same instructional techniques, the same sailing theory, the same rules, the same tactics. So there is no difference in between parasailing and sailing. The only difference is how we can approach different uh, disabilities. Because if I have a paraplegic on the polyplegic, I have an approach that uh, they can communicate well, but maybe I need to work on, the, on making the venue accessible. I have people with uh, cognitive disabilities, brain injuries, Maybe I need to change my communication task because I need to talk slowly, but then uh, adapting the venue is not so important. I have visual impairment. Okay, my communication is very important because I need to let them know that I speak to them. And uh, I need to make sure that uh, my venue is uh, safe for people with, uh, with visual impairments. I have hearing impairments. They can use hearing aids, so even uh, still here, my communication is uh, important. I probably need to be clear, maybe using less words or using notes. And uh, when we have intellectual disability, probably you already are expert in this. Uh, intellectual disability are a wide range of disability. So it's always better having a coach or an instructor or even some, uh, let's say, expert that uh, can help uh, us with that type of disability. And then safety, you know, safety is paramount in every sport. In our sports it is even more important because we are on the water and uh, we is sometimes it takes like, you stay out in the water one hour, two hours, three hours, so we need to check uh, safety very carefully. And uh, the main concerns are hypothermia, heat uh, exhaustion or dehydration. We have some sailors and some disabled people. They cannot feel heat, they cannot feel cold. So it's very important to make sure that uh, we are in, in control of this part. We can have behavioral issues with people with intellectual disabilities. For that reason, it's important to have someone prepared on that type of disability. We can have a communication. As we told before, communication uh, changes uh, greatly between people in a wheelchair, blind people, deaf people, uh, people with intellectual disabilities. And uh, we need to have uh, safety consideration, especially for people with disabilities. If you are in a wheelchair, maybe you cannot feel uh, pain and uh, we need to take care of the legs because they don't feel if the leg is uh, bent. And so, and it's, it's really important. Every type of disability has a different safety consideration. So this is the first, the first part, and this is basically an overview of parasailing. Now I have the second part, that is our parasailing development program is our main program dedicated to increase awareness of sailing and promote sailing in new countries, emerging countries, uh, and countries that don't have a sailing, uh, sailing background. I have here a video about the parasailing program we did in 2019. And uh, this is basically our staff that tells uh, what is uh, 
the FPDP and uh, any other, uh, some other info about the PDP. In the PDP, we provide uh, some theoretical lessons that are covering uh, approaching disability, how to uh, approach different types of disability, adaptation of the bots, uh, functional classification, how to involve a parasailing program in a national program. And uh, at the same time, we provide uh, on the water license with our coaches. So we help uh, sailors and coaches have a first experience of a para. So focusing on three main areas, uh, we'd look at the M&A and what they're doing, what they need to develop a program. And then we'd look at the coaches that are working with the people. So maybe there's already coaches that are involved in sailing and changing their thinking to understand that it's reasonably easy to coach people with disabilities. And then looking at any existing sailors that have disabilities and how to open more doors for them and improve their sailing. We've got um, five um, M&As represented here, four of which don't have um, a power program at all. Um, so we're very much working with their coaches and in, in sort of looking and looking at techniques and discussing ideas about how they can set up and establish their own programs. My aim is to provide these uh, this countries with a basic knowledge. So the coaches that are here can come back to the country and uh, give uh, their experience, give, provide their opinions and helping other coaches at the local club. The ultimate aim is obviously the reinstatement of sailing back in the Paralympics. Um, but I think sort of fundamentally, probably more, more essential is that, is, is, is the, the, the growth and sort of the tension within the sport as well. Anybody can sail. It's really a sport that anybody can do, whether they do it at performance level or recreational level, doesn't matter, but it's open to anyone who wants to do it. And we need to think of sailing being open to people with disabilities, people that are able, fully able, and just get, get sailing going with. So now let's say, what is, uh, we spoke about PDP, what is a PDP? Basically, is the World Sailing Para Development Programs is uh, aimed to help a member national authorities by assisting in the development of training of para sailors and their coaches through a number of dedicated per performance clinics, as well as helping them to arrange the classification opportunities for sailors. They are not yet classified in order to compete at the international events. Basically, our PDP is focused on enabling the participation, participation in the nation to grow with uh, sustainable training programs uh, aimed to increase coaching and sailing competencies uh, in uh, Paralympic sailing, aspire to increase awareness of parasailing and uh, increase the number of coaches equipped to deliver parasailing experience in their own countries, is aimed to increase participation in parasailing events, is aimed to inform the member national authorities and any other stakeholders involved in sailing how to incorporate the parasailing in the, into their national training program. So in, in short terms, we want to provide the basic knowledge to everyone, to le local level coaches, um, national training coaches, uh, uh, National Paralympic Committee uh, Sailing uh, Federation about parasailing because we'd like to, that uh, athletes they go to the club or they want to start sailing they find uh, a knowledge in in their area and uh, after they had this knowledge and they start sailing uh, at the local level they have the opportunity to excel as we call and to compete in uh, international ever event. And another aim is to create a sailing event in a specific area, like in Asia, to have an Asian sailing event or two, uh, two different uh, events, two or three events, having PDP, having opportunity for sailors to, to compete and to excel. How does it work? Uh, basically, the PDP is a, a four, five days training camp 
based once a year, but if possible more than once a year, in uh, each region, one in Africa, North America, South and Central America, Asia, Europe, and uh, Oceania. Each clinic will be run under the supervision of uh, qualified, world-saving nominated experts and coaches with Paralympic experience. As you see in the video before, we, have, we can send uh, our coaches or our experts, but many times we'd like to work with local experts because like in Asia, now we are doing about Asia, we have experts that are experts about parasailing in different uh, Asian countries. So we'd like to use the local knowledge of, uh, of coaches. These clinics are part founded by World Sailing and uh, part founded by the National Federation uh, or uh, and sponsor. So this is a discussion that we will have uh, when someone wants to arrange a PDP, how much uh, the support of World Sailing will be. And uh, ideally, we'd like to have a part of training, uh, a PDP before an event, because so we can help uh, sailors and athletes that are at, at events to increase, to perform better. And uh, we provide a daily briefing and debriefing. We provide coaching on the water if the sailor don't have coach. Uh, we provide uh, a lot of other supports so we noticed that uh, one of the big obstacles uh, to be at an event, even if local, if uh, as sailors maybe they don't have coach, they don't have support. So we want to provide uh, equipment, coaching and support to all athletes. You don't need to have a boat, you don't need to have a coach, you don't need to have uh, a lot of supports. We can help you to come at our event, at our PDP, and uh, be supported for four and five days. Who can attend the PDP? Everyone can attend the PDP. We usually send uh, to all the MNAs, uh, Regional Paralympic Committee, an invitation to apply annually. So when we know that uh, we have a PDP in Asia uh, three or four months before, we start sending an invitation. We review all the application because we need to make sure that uh, our program is uh, right for the applicants. So if we have, uh, uh, let's say, expert sailors, we update our program with more expert coaching. If we have a first time, first time sailors, uh, we will have uh, the program will start from scratch with really basic coaching and basic approach to sailing. And uh, each MA or Regional Paralympic Committee can apply usually for maximum two sailors and one coach and a caregiver if uh, the athlete has a high level of disability and they need a caregiver to attend our clinics. But uh, sometimes uh, we will allow to have more than two sailors, more than one coach. It really depends uh, from the venue because if we have the possibility to host, 30 sailors, uh, we can have more than one, two. If uh, the venue is small and uh, we are limited to 15, 20, we need to limit the number of uh, athletes to increase the number of uh, countries. And uh, in, uh, in principle, all the MNAs and the sailors, uh, they are successful in their application, so they are accepted for our event. They could have uh, up to 50% of travel expenses and uh, uh, travel expenses, accommodation, food cost, uh, all covered by uh, war saving. So let's say it's 50% of our travel and uh, full accommodation provided. If, uh, let's say, I am a country that I want to host the PDP, what uh, I need to have, what are my basic requirements? We need to be fully accessible because uh, let's say 60%, 70% of our sales are uh, in a wheelchair, so the five physical disabilities. We need to have teaching facilities that can be a simple whiteboard and a simple tent uh, that uh, we can sit all together. We need to have uh, accommodation, 
ideally not far from the same venue. We need to have a possibility to provide the food. And uh, if we can have uh, excellent, good sailing condition, it's, it's great. We need the sailing condition that can be reliable. And uh, I'm sure we can work with m &As to find a, a, a right venue with the right uh, uh, sailing condition. For an example, so we, we will need a safe wheelchair accessible pontoons, a safe sailing area, ideally 10 or uh, let's say eight to 10 Paralympic equipment or other equipment uh, to accommodate the sailing, uh, sailors with disabilities. As I told before, you can have uh, specific power equipment. We can help maybe to provide specific power equipment. But if you have another boat, we can work together to make another boat uh, accessible on, or otherwise to work with your equipment to make sure that we can use it for our event. And then uh, we need to have accommodation. Ideally, is within 10 kilometers. Uh, it's even better if it is a working distance. But uh, here, this is a point that uh, we can work together. We have uh, we had different PDP. Some PDP they had really the accommodation at two minutes walk, and some was like 40 minutes drive. Is not a problem. And here we have another video about the uh, Philippine sailors that competed in our event. Cherry Pinpin has flown almost halfway across the world to take part at the Parasailing World Championships in Kiel. She's one of two sailors from the Philippines competing in the Women's Hamster 303 fleet. Um, how difficult was, was it for you to come here? It's almost the other side of the world for you, isn't it? Yes, well, it was 19 hours, but 19 hours is nothing compared to the months of preparation in trying to get the keel to start with. I think we were working on this for four months of day in, day out, and that was harder than flying here. <laughs> the Hansa 303 is designed to be simple to sail for people of all shapes, sizes, and abilities. That makes for a level playing field, although steering the short, wide hull smoothly through the waves can be difficult to get right. Pin Pin struggled on day one, yet she's lost none of her fighting spirit. And I'm extremely thrilled, like, I'm gonna go get some people today. <laughs> or actually, I'm just trying to do my best today. Come and see us on the water. <laughs> So as you see, Cherry is one of the our was one of the our main sailors from Philippines from Asia. She competed in a lot of our events and she is very involved in, in the, the national sailing program. Uh, now, what we did in the last three years, since we are talking about the Asian countries, in the last three years we had the three PDP in Asia. We had Hong Kong in 2017. Japan in 2018 and Thailand in 2019. We had basically eight countries competing and involved in this, uh, in our PDP. We have Indonesia, we have Philippines, we have Singapore, Thailand, Macau, Malaysia, Japan, and Taipei, uh, Chinese Taipei. And uh, in this uh, three uh, PDP, we had more than 40 sailors and coaches involved. So has been, all the PDP has been very successfully. And uh, these are the images of uh, our last PDP in, uh, in Thailand in 2019. But as I told, we had a beautiful PDP in Hong Kong in 2017. Hong Kong uh, in, uh, in the Asian, in Southeast Asia is probably the, is I'm sure the most uh, advanced uh, in uh, parasailing with their club. Japan, uh, they have a lot of boats and they are always involved in organizing events. So it's in, we had a good, uh, a good outcome of uh, this PDP in Asia. Uh, the situation in, our situation in Asia is basically 
that uh, the Asian Paralympic Committee members that uh, at the moment are involved in parasailing events, so they participated in the PDP, they organized events uh, or they competed in our main uh, events, are 12. We have Chinese Taipei, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, Macau, Oman, and UAE, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, and Thailand. And uh, last year, we had the sailors from uh, Chinese Taipei. They won the bronze at our uh, main uh, world championship. So it was a very good uh, highlight for sailing uh, from uh, Asian countries. And uh, we also have uh, an uh, the Asian Sailing Federation, as you see, there is a link, has a specific parasailing committee. So they are specifically working with uh, Asian countries and uh, they have a specific knowledge of the area. If uh, you want to find some resources uh, available online, there is this Adaptive Sailing Manual. It is basically created by US Sailing with in cooperation with War Sailing to create uh, this uh, adaptive sailing manual. This is a very good manual that covers uh, all uh, you need to know about uh, uh, disability in sailing, classification and uh, parasailing equipment. You can download it from the, there is a link here, and then when you can receive, uh, when you will download uh, the presentation, probably you will uh, click on the link and you can download it. Otherwise, we have other resources. Uh, you can find it on the World Sailing website. So basically, we have a website that is uh, www.sailing.org and uh, is full of, uh, full of resources for sailing and parasailing. Otherwise, uh, it's probably the easy way. This is, these are my contact. There's my mobile, my Skype, uh, my email. And uh, any question you have, uh, any information you need, uh, it's important for us. Uh, don't, please uh, don't hesitate to send me an email or a Skype uh, or give me a call because uh, we are here to help. We want to help you to be involved in parasailing and uh, we want to do as much as we can uh, to help and to create opportunity for everyone to save. So this is the end of my presentation. And uh, I leave to uh, Sean. And if someone has a question, so I stop sharing uh, my video. Thank you, uh, Massimo, uh, for your great presentation and information. I uh, believe uh, we will have some questions from participants. Yeah, uh, I, I don't have any question uh, from um, chat window. So anyone, if you have any question, just uh, feel free to ask uh, Massimo. Um, you can turn on your uh, video so I can see your face and uh, hand if you may uh, raise your hand for a uh, question or you can uh, speak, then I can hear your voice. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, just yes. uh, can you say your name and uh, Sorry, organization I'm, I'm, and position? I the camera, but I'm not sure <laughs> where it goes. Um, oh, here it is. Uh, yeah. Hi, I'm uh, Peter Jacobs. Um, the guy who started uh, disabled sailing in uh, Thailand. Uh, quite recently, I think we're one of the newest uh, uh, group in Asia. Um, we hope to, to be doing well. We went from, from zero uh, boats a few years ago to now a fleet of 13 and hopefully uh, growing. Um, to that, uh, to that goal, uh, we the one we started with the SV-14 to make a more affordable boat uh, so that a uh, developing country would also be able to, to afford a, a, a boat. So my interest is very much on, on developing countries being Asia and Africa. 
uh, I believe the main reason why we weren't included in the Paralympic was a lack of countries. And it's definitely not the European ones. If I look just at the picture now in front of me, on the screen saver, I see the English flag and, and the Italian flags and the Finnish flags and so on and so on, Swedish, Germany. So they, they have the mean, uh, the financial mean to, to, to participate. Uh, and there's, there's no need to have more of the, those countries already there. The only thing we can do is expanding to new countries. And yes, we have the PDPs, which are fantastic. And I really, we had a, a very good time in, in Thailand and learned a lot of things when uh, World Sailing and Rob came to teach us. It was absolutely fantastic. My question is, what are we really doing for the countries where there is absolutely nothing? I'm thinking about our neighbors in Myanmar, for example. Uh, I'm thinking about Vietnam, I'm thinking about Cambodia. What do we have in place for country where there isn't somebody that is trying to set up something? Are we approaching those existing yacht clubs, which, which are there? Is there any uh, mandatory requirements from uh, MNAs in those countries to, to do something about it? Because if the MNAs don't have to do it, it, it certainly won't happen. That's a bit my question. Thank you. To answer your question, there is uh, so there is no <laughs> there is a, it's not mandatory for the MA to promote parasailing, and uh, uh, we have uh, sometimes a problem of uh, communication with uh, MNAs in some of the smaller countries, uh, as you know, and uh, some. For this reason, we are trying to work with different uh, stakeholders. We are trying to work sometimes with the National Paralympic Committee. Uh, we are trying to involve uh, the MNAs because we need to involve the MNAs. We are trying to work with local organization, but uh, what we need is, uh, I think, a link uh, of uh, different uh, people on the on the ground and uh, neighboring country that can help to promote. Because we can do a PDP, we are more than happy to have a PDP in Asia, and we have a PDP in Asia planned the next week, next year in Singapore. We have the capacity to invite, as you told, uh, Myanmar, Vietnam, uh, and uh, we have Nepal uh, asking to uh, to start parasailing. Uh, we will more than happy to be um, to invite them and to support them to provide equipment to provide. Uh, economic support, but uh, we need to reach them. We need to let them know that there is this event. For this reason, I'm, we want to work with the Asian Paralympic Committee, and the Asian Paralympic Committee has always been very reactive on this, uh, with uh, local clubs. Uh, so this is very important. And uh, we need to work together because uh, we are worth saying, uh, but uh, basically, yeah, we are in London. I'm not in Asia. <laughs> and uh, you in Asia, the Asian Parliament Committee in Asia, knows better than anyone else uh, how it works, uh, the people to reach. Uh, so please, uh, everyone, help us to reach uh, sailors, to reach organization. Don't be, as I told before, you have my email. Don't be afraid to copy me in your email to anyone you think can be involved because uh, we have a lot of contacts but sometimes uh, and i think it's a problem of other sports it's not easy to reach uh, the athletes or the people that uh, are on the ground working uh, on this uh, on this topic so as i told my contacts are in, my, in the presentation contact me let's keep in touch uh, copy me if you have any any contact and uh, I'd be happy to work and provide information and help as much as we can. Can you hear me? Hi, yeah. sorry, my video yeah. doesn't seem to be working, but if you can hear me, um, yeah, yeah. Kay from Hong Kong, I'm just wondering how far are we forward with sailing, getting back into the Asian Para Games? We had sailing in once in 2014. When do we expect to hopefully see it back 
well, to see it reinstated. Does anybody have any ideas? Uh, let's see. We applied for the 2022, and uh, uh, basically our bid for 2022 was not uh, accepted for the event in China. I know that uh, the Asian Sailing Federation is working with uh, the organizer who have a possibility to be like a test event because uh, uh, the Asian, Asian Games, uh, they built a new venue for sailing. So we only need, uh, the, the venue is there and uh, we have a Chinese uh, manufacturer of equipment. They will be ready to help uh, providing, uh, let's say, providing boats. So at the moment, uh, the situation is that uh, we are not in 2022 officially, but uh, I know that someone is, uh, the Asian Sailing Federation is working on that. Okay, thank you very much. I'll help if I can too. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Kay. I, uh, from APC um, perspective, uh, all the sports uh, are open to be included the, um, the sports program of uh, Asian Paragames. Uh, including sailing. We are also looking forward to uh, having back the sailing um, to our um, Asian Para Games. But unfortunately, like uh, Massimo said, uh, it will not be happening for 2022 games. But um, like I said, um, there's always some um, opportunity. So we will see. Thank you. I don't see there's uh, no more questions from our audiences. So um, before we close uh, today's uh, session, I'm sure there will be, um, okay, I got, um, yeah, I'm told that uh, Mr. Tarek uh, has a question or yep. something to add. Okay, go ahead, Harry. Yeah, actually, it's not a question. Thank you, Sean. And uh, I would like just to say hi to uh, uh, our uh, presenter today, Massimo. It's uh, much appreciated from your part. And uh, thank you for your time and efforts to make this uh, webinar today uh, happen. We are very delighted. And my apologies for not joining from the beginning. I was in the middle of another meeting with Tokyo 2020. Uh, organizing committee. So uh, thank you so much again, uh, just on behalf of uh, the APC board and the uh, management team. I would like to uh, pass my uh, regards to you and hopefully this is, will not be the last webinar. There will be more occasions to meet again, either virtually or uh, physically, to share uh, more information about uh, parasailing and how we can uh, jointly uh, work together to reinstate the sport and the uh, and the games, either at the regional level or the Paralympic Games. Thank you again, Massimo. Thank you very much, Tarek, and thank you for the opportunity to uh, have this webinar because for us, it's, you know, it's always very important, but especially in this moment that we cannot travel, we cannot be at the Asian Paralympic Committee meetings. Uh, it's, uh, it's very important to promote sailing. Thank you. Okay, any more questions from audience? Okay, I think uh, it's time to um, close uh, today's session. But before we close the, uh, today's session, if uh, possible, uh, Massimo, can you uh, just uh, brief us a little bit about the uh, next session? Yeah, we are next session. We will have we be specific on uh, uh, classification, so functional classification for sailors. So to understand uh, what type of uh, disability and what type of uh, check uh, is uh, requirement to compete uh, in a para, so specific para sailing event and the para sailing championship or para sailing uh, regional uh, events. So we will have a, our chief classifier that will explain you about the functional classification. 
Thank you. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, don't miss the um, opportunity. And also, I'd like to encourage you to invite uh, your colleagues and anyone who has interest in uh, parasailing. Okay. So this is uh, all for today. So hope uh, you guys have a good day and see you next time. Uh, thank you, Massimo, again, and thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.